again, I'm so happy to be here, to have you all here in our country. We are very honored. And I want to thank uh, Kate, David, thank you for thank you. making this possible. Uh, another person that I, I want to thank, Monica de Graef. Yes. She's a... We are both responsible for uh, constructing this uh, convention center. Uh, this is uh, the first time that it's used. I confess it's the first time I've been here. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's supposed to be, or it's going to be, the best convention center of the whole of Latin America. That's what the people say. When, when you arrived at the airport, El Dorado Airport, 10 minutes from here. It's the number one airport in the whole of Latin America in cargo, number three in passengers. And uh, some of you are going to travel around Colombia, and if you go driving, you will find Colombia is, being, is constructing uh, highways that are similar to the ones you find in Switzerland or in Germany. We have now the most efficient ports uh, in the whole of Latin America, in the Caribbean, Cartagena, and in the Pacific, Buenaventura. But those are all material things. It's important, it's a necessary condition for development, but the most important thing is what you have in your heart and your mind. Your values, your principles, those I call them the maps that guide you when you're lost. And that is uh, acquired through good education. And that's why I've been making an effort in Colombia to give education more and more importance. We, for the last four years, the budget for education has been the number one over defense, security, and it's increasing every year. And And, uh, and I want to thank you for coming to Colombia. At this very moment uh, of our history, we're in a tipping point. Things are changing, and changing precisely in our minds and in our hearts. Because to finish a war of uh, more than 53 years is something that is quite, uh, quite a, uh, an experience for for everybody, and that's what we're trying to assimilate and to, to build a new country and construct the peace that is not constructed from one day to another, but you have to go probably one, two, or three generations. Kofi Annan, great man, was saying that exactly a year ago, uh, I uh, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. I remember uh, exactly a year ago, four o'clock in the morning, one of my kids calls me and says, Dad, you were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. I, can hear, I couldn't hear him very, very much because I was sound asleep, four o'clock in the morning. I, didn't, I thought somebody was making a joke and I hang up. Um, <laughs> And then I realized it might be true, and, and I said to myself, the first question is, why? Why me? Or why, uh, why, why was I awarded the, the Peace Prize? If at that time we had just lost three days before a referendum on peace, and we had not signed a new agreement, and the Nobel Committee said, and when I asked, well, what is the reason? And they said it publicly, because you tried. And that's one of the messages I want to leave with you. Never stop trying. Try always. <laughs> and uh, I kept trying. 
and I said, six years of negotiations cannot be simply abandoned, but I must recognize and I must thank that the people who at that precise moment gave me the more strength to continue to persevere were the young kids from Colombia. They went to the streets. <laughs> they went out to the streets, out to the plazas. Uh, we were all together a couple of days ago in the Plaza de Bolivar. It was full of young people saying, we want peace now. We want a new agreement now. And the whole country heard that. And the opposition heard that. And that was what gave us the strength to continue signing a new agreement, renegotiated. And that is why just a couple of weeks ago, we destroyed the last weapon of the most the oldest and most powerful guerrilla group in the whole of the American history. So. And uh, you, you are here because you're leaders. And you're not the leaders of tomorrow. You are the leaders of today. And uh, when I was hearing all these wonderful leaders um, telling their stories, um, I was saying there's a common denominator, very important. When I heard all of the stories said, this is a generation that has compassion. The ability to care for others and act to help others when they are in need. This is extremely important in today's world. Leadership with compassion achieves much more. And you are all examples of that. Uh, Asila and her decision uh, to use art to rebuild the life of Muslim and Buddhist orphans. Connor and his uh, tireless work to empower communities to solve collective problems. I was in Belfast and I, I saw that type of work that you're doing to rebuild uh, that great city. Noria Jan and her efforts to raise the voices of marginalized uh, Afghan women. Hippolyte uh, and his amazing inner strength to overcome tragedy and uh, help uh, the post-conflict generations and vulnerable communities. Usam, Usman and his project to help parents send the girls to school. Tafan Ako Sharif and her valuable work with children at re refugee camps. And Rotem, her passion for peace and sustainable development. And that, you all have that marvelous uh, quality, compassion. And this is something that the world needs today, very much. And uh, we are now in Colombia trying to build peace, to reconcile, but not only to reconcile among persons. 50 years of war leaves many scars, many scars that are difficult to heal, and we have to do that. But there's another issue that you have discussed during these uh, days and that you must always be aware of and hopefully be more, uh, be passionate about it. We must reconcile, and we're doing that in Colombia, with nature, with the environment, with, with uh, the future of the planet. For 50 years, this war left more than 8 million victims, but also left a 
very important victim, the environment. The war is, was a really an ecocide. To give you just one simple uh, number, the amount of barrels of oil that were spilled into our rivers and to our two seas are the equivalent of 14 times the Exxon Valdez disaster, which was the mo biggest environmental disaster that the world has had, 14 times. That's why we are now try trying also to reconcile with nature. And that makes us, uh, that obligates us to be very proactive in the discussions of those type of issues around the world. I don't know how many of you know that Colombia was the country that proposed the Sustainable Development Goals. And I will tell you very shortly how, how that was, how that came about. Two young women in our Ministry of Foreign Relations came to me and said, President Santos, we have here a great opportunity. Colombia is one of the most mega diverse countries in the world. Our biodiversity is probably the most important in the whole world per square kilometer, the number one country. We are one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change. We have to, to take a, a strong position uh, in this uh, discussion of, the, of, the, uh, of what is going to happen with the Millennium Goals. These were the old goals that were approved in the United Nations. And he said, let's introduce the environment, sustainability. And I said, well, and uh, what do you propose? And they said, well, if you back us, we will start doing this work. And I said, the great idea. Let's, let's start to, to see if, if somebody hear, hear us. And they started going around the world saying, we, uh, we would like to the sustainable, the, the goals to be sustainable development goals. We would like to bring in the developed world. It's not only goals for the developing country, it's also for the developed countries. And everybody has a responsibility because it's the whole world that is in danger. And uh, at the beginning, we found a lot of skepticism. And uh, some people ask, uh, but uh, an emerging country like Colombia making these proposals, why Colombia? And we said, and these two young girls had answered, why not Colombia? And uh, we started to convince more and more countries. We finally, in July of 2012, in Rio Janeiro, the Rio Plus 20 Summit, we made the formal proposal, and that was finally adopted by the United Nations in the year 2015. What is, what is the message here? What is, what is it that I want to leave with you? These two young women leaders were audacious. And they thought the unthinkable. And this is my message to you. Always try and be, try to be audacious. Try to think big, think the unthinkable, think that the impossible is possible. Because when you really try, many times you will make it possible. And today we have these sustainable goals and we are working very hard to fulfill them. And we're doing that through perseverance, 
we're doing that convinced that this is something good for us in Colombia, but also for the whole world. And we do it because it's a responsibility, because we are a very rich country in terms of sustainable development. Uh, I don't know if you, if you know, or if, how many of you know that Colombia, Rotem, you, you, are, you are very keen on preserving water. Colombia, the country you're in, is the number one country in terms of rain. In Colombia, it rains more than any other country in the world. <laughs> we have something called paramos. There's no translation in English. Uh, it's like wetlands in the top of the mountains. These are special ecosystems that only uh, are only present in the Andes Mountains here in, in South America, near the equator. But those are special ecosystems which are uh, factories of water. Water just, it's the, the origin of all our rivers and Colombia is one, the, one of the countries that has more rivers in the whole world. And this is something uh, you in Israel, for example, uh, know the value of water and how you have been preserving. We have lots of water, but we have to preserve that water because the water and the food is slowly uh, becoming more and more scarce. And that's why we feel in Colombia that we have a tremendous responsibility uh, to preserve water, to preserve uh, the land, to produce food without, without uh, putting in danger the environment. Uh, we have 37 of these paramos. Uh, and uh, these are the source not only of water, of many, many species. I don't know if you know that Colombia for example, uh, is a paradise for bird watchers. There are more birds in Colombia than any other country in the world. And it's a paradise for bird watchers. And many of these birds come from those special ecosystems. So we are, we're trying to then reconcile among ourselves after 50 years of war and with nature. And uh, this is something that it should be done all around the world. Uh, some of you were saying that Colombia is an inspiration. I would say the contrary. You are all an inspiration for us. And we... <laughs> and hearing all your stories and your experiences and why you are here and what you discuss and what your goals are. That is something that for Colombians have been, have been extremely important. For me, it has been extremely important. This ratifies something that uh, the Pope told the young people uh, some weeks ago when he came. He said, uh, never, never let anybody steal your hope. Never let anybody steal your happiness. You must always think big. And your presence here gives us Colombians a tremendous encouragement to pursue that course, to pursue, like uh, many people say, the happiness, no, to pursue our objectives, to try to make hope and our objectives become a reality. Your experience and life stories fill our spirits with hope of a better tomorrow. Your presence here, first time that this marvelous group of people won a young world meets in Latin America. This is a young continent, a continent that needs 
inspiration like the one you are giving us Colombians. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart that you that you chose Colombia for this meeting. A better, brighter future is possible. With people, leaders like you, people like you, uh, I know it's possible. And we will keep struggling to get this better planet, to get this better world. Our voices are now being um, being uh, digital too. This is a digital world. So uh, I have a, a few followers. I have 5.1 million followers. <laughs> and so I'm going to ask you to tweet. If uh, uh, we will tweet and we will let the world hear what we want the world to do. And we will send them a, me a message from Colombia. Uh, by, the, by this marvelous group of people, by you, uh, and we will say, one moment, <laughs> okay. Uh, ready? Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Don't forget, we are all one race. We're all one world. One young world. Thank you. Thank you, President Santos, for your speech, for your amazing hospitality, and for the example you're showing the world. What an amazing leader.